In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's been, I think, nine months since we had the opportunity to gather together for a staff mass. And I'm really grateful. The great interrupter, the COVID pandemic, has changed so many things in our lives, and in our country, in our world. And so I'm glad that we can gather so many here in person, which is so good to see. And those who are joining us virtually through the live streaming, um, let us rejoice that we can be together in these late days now of the Advent season and so close to our celebration of the Lord's birth. As we always do at the beginning of every Eucharistic liturgy, let us now ac acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. So Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who seeing the human race fallen into death, willed to redeem it by coming by, by the coming of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that those who confess his incarnation with humble fervor may merit his company as their Redeemer who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah brought Samuel with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, pardon, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I in turn give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. She left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. Lord, 
the Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles. He also exalts. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap, he lifts up the poor to seat them with nobles and make a glorious throne their heritage. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory, glory to you, o lord. lord mary said my soul proclaims the greatness of the lord my spirit rejoices in god my savior for he has looked upon his lowly servant from this day all generations will call me blessed the almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name he has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's just so good to see everyone's face as we gather. Even if it's partially covered, it's still good to see you in person and to gather here to hear God's word and to celebrate the mystery of the Eucharist. And again, I especially greet those who are not able to be here in person, but who are with us virtually through the live streaming. As I was thinking about the Liturgy of the Word for this December the 22nd, what came to my mind was those picture puzzles, not the kind that you piece together piece by piece and, you know, 200, 500 pieces, but the picture puzzles where they put two images side by side and then you're challenged to spot the differences. You know, in this one, there's no bird in the tree, but there was in this one, and this one, the boy's wearing a baseball cap, and this one, he's not. And there's five or six differences like that. And so you have to consider both sides and see where the changes have taken place. Well, today's liturgy of the word puts Hannah, the mother of Samuel, and our blessed mother side by side. And as we look at the stories, as we look at the images of Hannah and Mary, there are striking resemblances. And at the same time, there are intentional differences. 
and it might help us today in these late days of Advent as our Christmas preparations get more intense to look at the similarities and look at the differences and see what we might gain from that comparison. The similarities, how, how are these stories um, intentionally, how, how do they resemble each other? Well, first of all, it's both about the unlikely conception and birth of a son. Uh, in each case, that conception and birth manifests the mighty power of God. In both cases, the mothers raise their voices in a magnificent hymn of praise, grateful for God's favor. Hannah's canticle, which sounds very much like the Magnificat, was the responsorial psalm, and then in Luke's gospel, we hear Mary's wonderful canticle of praise, my soul magnifies the Lord. So both mothers raise their voices in magnificent canticles of praise for God's favor shown to them. Both of those sons will be responsible for major historic changes. Samuel will be that transition agent from the time when Israel was a loose confederation of tribes. There was no central government. They simply were all living in their tribal areas and they would unite as, a, as an enemy attacked Israel, but they were loose confederation of tribes. Samuel would anoint Saul, the first king, and then he would anoint the second, the great King David. And so Samuel is, is, is that guide, as it were, to see this historic change in God's people to a monarchy. And of course, Mary's son would bring about another type of kingdom. He would introduce into human history in his own flesh, in his own being, truly God and truly man, the Father's kingdom, the kingdom of God. Those are some of the clear similarities between the two images that the liturgy of the word places before us today. But let's look at some of those intentional differences. Hannah repeatedly begged God for a child. Over the years, she begged God for a child. Mary wasn't asking God to have a baby. He was, she was drawn into God's plan. She was betrothed, yet to live with her spouse, Joseph. And yet now she finds she's going to have a child, but it was not her idea. Hannah, took the child to the temple of the Lord at Shiloh and left him there. Now imagine that. All those years of begging God that she could conceive and give birth to a child. And when that happens, she gives the child to God. Contrary to any maternal instinct that you and I might think that woman had in her heart, in her mind, she does the reverse. Mary didn't take her child to a temple, but in that conception by the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary becomes the temple. Mary, in her own body, becomes the dwelling place of the God-man, the newly conceived Jesus within her virginal womb. God came to dwell in her. She did not go to God's dwelling place, the temple, but God made her the new holy place. Hannah acts against her maternal instincts the great reversal that we might expect of her. Mary speaks of an even greater reversal in her hymn of praise, how God will upset the mighty, 
and raise up the lowly. A new revolution is being introduced into history with the conception of this child. Hannah keeps her promise that she had made to God, and Mary obeys the fulfillment that God had made, the promise that God had made to Israel. I think it's helpful to spot the similarities and spot the differences as we conclude this Advent season and prepare for the celebration of the Nativity of the Lord. Because God, who is mighty, continues to do great things for us. His Hannah's, his Mary's in 2020. Neither of these women were handed a script. They had to live in the mystery. And so must we. Whatever that mystery might mean at this time in each one of our individual lives, your married lives, your family lives, the life of our church, we have to live into the mystery as they did. We don't have a script from God. We have the wonderful sacred scriptures and the teachings of our church to guide us but it, we have to live with the mystery. And as they did, trust and obey the will of God. Mary's Magnificat that we heard in today's gospel from Luke happens at the time of the visitation. The visitation immediately follows the Annunciation. Remember, Luke explains to us how Surprisingly, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and makes this amazing announcement to her that of all women, she's been chosen. But it always impresses me, and that was yesterday's gospel, Luke ends it by simply telling us, and the angel departed from her. There's Mary, young woman, now having conceived a child by the power of the Holy Spirit, and she's alone. Now what? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to think? She was alone, but she didn't remain in that state because, as Luke tells us, she went immediately with this astounding news to her older cousin who also was living an amazing mystery. Well beyond the years of childbearing, she too is six months pregnant. And Mary goes immediately to her cousin, who also has felt the mighty power of God at work in her life. As we consider these similarities and these differences, we might have some questions that we could each ask ourselves. Am I similar in some ways to Hannah, repeatedly begging God for something to happen in my life? Am I like that, like Hannah? Am I being asked to detach from something or even someone that I want to keep, like Hannah? What reversal do I want God to make in my life? What reversal would I like God to make in someone else's life? If I'm feeling left alone somehow with that now what moment in my life, who is the Elizabeth? that I should make haste to go to, to share what's happening to me. Where have I got to sing God's praise for something great that he has done for me, something great he's done for my family? 
I think these are some good questions to ponder as we allow Hannah and Mary to inspire us because the Almighty has done great things for us. It's just that sometimes we forget or sometimes we never noticed. Let Christmas and our celebration of the Lord's nativity jog our memories. Let Christmas open our eyes. The Almighty has done the Almighty is doing, and the Almighty will continue to do great things for us. My friends, united around our altar, we offer to the Father our petitions. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Gaynor, and the priests, deacons, and consecrated religious of our diocese, that they may proclaim God's mercy, God's promise of mercy through their lives and their ministries, and for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in publicly elected offices, especially those who are newly elected, that the nativity story of Jesus' birth may inspire them to continue to promote and pass laws that protect human life from conception until death, for both an end to the pandemic and for all those affected by it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocesan staff gathered here for Mass, may we always remember that we represent Jesus and proclaim his greatness in our duties and ministries throughout the diocese. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions each one of us holds in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these petitions we have placed before you and answer them according to what is best for us in your divine will. As Advent draws to a close and we look forward to Friday, we look forward Friday to the celebration of our Savior's birth. Give us the grace to continue rejoicing in God our Savior in our own day-to-day -day lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O, God, o Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis uncelli et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim Claim your death, O Lord, and proclaim your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, passing from this life, find admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. A new stay. Quitolis peccata mundi, miserere Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
blessed are you among all women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Jesus formed in your faith. Ave Maria, Alleluia. Jesus born in Let us pray. May reception of your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so that we may go out to meet our Savior with worthy deeds when he comes and merit the rewards of the blessed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, unfortunately, we can't gather for a party and a dinner and singing, 
and I'll miss very much conducting the 12 days of Christmas, <laughs> but uh, I, I am once again grateful that we have the opportunity to do what is most important and very much at the center, the source and summit of our lives in Christ, our lives together in the church and the work that we do for Christ in the church, and that is to have celebrated together the mystery of the Eucharist. So I, I thank everyone in a very special way. Thanks to uh, Jordan and Rachel for taking care of the technology. Um, Evan Brickner is the uh, organist at our cathedral. Many of you I'm sure know him certainly, but thank you Evan for coming to us today to lead our sung prayer here in this mass. And I certainly want to extend my warmest um, and best wishes and prayers to you, uh, to your families, loved ones for a truly blessed, um, joyful, holy, uh, Christmas season and a happy and healthy new year. So please take those greetings with you and, and as soon as we possibly can, we're gonna have a big party <laughs> uh, here with the whole staff in person and celebrate um, uh, when we can. So once again, Merry Christmas to, to everyone. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you.